Joining me now is the author of that Microsoft report, Clint Watts. He's also an NBC News uh, national security analyst. So, Clint, this is fascinating. Tell us more about your report and how Iran is targeting elections here in the United States. Yeah, so just to update everybody where we're at, this is the third of four reports that we'll do. And since the second report, which came out in April, we've seen a significant change. Russia has been constant in its influence activities going into election 2024. You could say they've been constant in 2020, 2016. That is what they do. But the Iranians in the last three months have picked up significantly in two key aspects. One, developing websites. So why do they do this? It's so they can launder information or uh, news that they fabricate in a way that could influence the election uh, in terms of what the candidates are saying or doing, but also the conduct of it. Separately, it's starting what we've seen many times in the last few years from Iran, which is a series of cyber campaigns. Uh, as you mentioned there, spear phishing or going after many targets, hoping someone will click on a link and they would gain access to the account. They could do this for things like espionage, but it could also be for hack and leak operations, similar to what we saw in election 2016. I'd also note, though, uh, this is consistent with what we've seen in Iran, uh, the Iranians doing to Israel, an election in Bahrain. Uh, they did this to the Albanian government a couple of years ago, and we also saw them get quite active as the election approached about this time in 2020. And earlier this year, the U.S. Intelligence Committee uh, warned that Russia was trying to influence the election, but that was in favor of former President Trump. Is there any sign that ir the Iranians are trying to boost a particular candidate or party? Or party? Right now, what it looks like is the Iranians are trying to gain access, so it's hard to fully understand their intent. But what we do know is since uh, election 2020 and due to the constant standoff they've had with the United States and basically its conduct in the regional wars, particularly the situation with Israel, they've taken a very aggressive tone, very aggressive in the sense of trying to create chaos in and around the election. In 2020, one of the campaigns they run was a fake uh, email going out to voters, trying to scare them about the polling places, impersonating the Proud Boys, essentially trying to make it look like there could be violence if you went to vote. We imagine that kind of activity will pick up all the way to Election Day. In part, it could be to influence around the candidate, but it also is just to send a retaliatory sort of signal to the U.S. for what they perceive as grievance uh, based on activities uh, going on in the Middle East even today. So what would your advice be to voters, somebody that's watching today? How do they not uh, be influenced by this type of an attack? There's a couple things they can do. First, just on the cyber front, two-factor authentication, you know, making sure you update all of your applications, that's critical. Knowing what you're clicking on and who the source of what you're clicking on, that's critical. The spear phishing part that you mentioned at the beginning is what we're always trying to avoid. On the influence side, when you're on social media, there's two things to always look for. Who, as in the person or the organization, is the source of the information that you're reviewing or reading? If you don't know that source, you shouldn't be too trustful of it. And then the second part, so even if you do have a source, uh, let's say it's an anonymous sort of source, do you know where they are physically in the world? If we're on this show here, what do we always say? We're in Washington, D.C. or New York City. Uh, if someone won't say who they are and where they're at, they're oftentimes obfuscating who, who they are and where they're at. So you shouldn't be put too much trust in it. And the last part is part of what Microsoft's doing is rolling out content credentials. And, and part of this is trying to make sure that people know the source of the information, whether it's uh, authentic or maybe it's using new AI tools. And all that is part of a tech accord we've signed on with with all the social media companies that if we see anything related to election interference, we'll make sure and try and take that content down and partner with other technology companies. OK, huge issue impacting this upcoming election. Clint Walt Watts, thank you for that. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.